So, you want to become a fisherman, but your name's not Gorton. Well, you come to the right place. There's a lot of fish around here. Let's get, get grab the fishing pole, and I'll teach you how to fish, ladies and gentlemen. I'm like your father. Hey, guys. I'm about to touch by Kai. I'm Kai. And today we're back. We're back. I can't speak today. We're back once again is what I'm trying to say. And today I want to take a look at this cool thing we're doing here. Um, I really, really enjoy making scenes like depth of field and like bloom. And I just like love using... A bunch of different effects in a scene so we're gonna go ahead and get started today what i want to do is i want to animate this i made this quick little thing here and i'll break down how i made this and then we're going to animate it together so what we're going to do is if, you, if i pan out here you can see we have a couple things going on here this is where the camera is it's like all slanted and tilted and you know whatever else um we have initial you know text object here that says whatever you want to say and then i have these uh planes here that i just hit shift a and i added a plane mesh plane hit rx 90 to you know move it around um and hit s z to scale it down like that it's literally all that i did and i just like you know hit sx and then g to move it around you know whatever else um i just did that and then i added a nice emission um material to them so i went to the material set tab here his little plus button that was over here it's like add new material and then change it to emission um uh emission right there boom and then made like an orange color and then just bumped the strength up like 26 um and i'm using that same material on both of these bad boys and then this one's just white so these really, really skinny ones are just white uh i want a five strength um not much going on here really and then we have this light this this area lamp is kind of like just lighting the the text word from the top it's kind of rotated so it's like you know bright at the top darker at the bottom and then finally we have these two pieces of text that i duplicated by hitting shift d on my keyboard to duplicate them and then i moved them so close to the camera that when i turned on depth of field in the camera tab here and put the f stop to 0.2 and change the focus distance so that it matched you know where the text was sitting um, then it uh, it just works. It looks good. It looks really cool. So I want to go ahead and animate this. The first thing I want to do is use the depth of field animation here. So let's go ahead and on frame zero, I'm gonna hover my cursor over top of this thing that says two point uh, two, and I'm going to um, hit I on my keyboard. And now I'm gonna go to frame. Let's say actually I'm gonna change my my frame rate so quickly. We're gonna go to the main tab here, the output tab, and change the frame rate to sixty. There we go. And we're gonna go back to the camera tab and then just play this. And on around frame 100, right there, frame 100, we will add um, a little bit of motion to this. So we'll put this on about 2.9, then an I on my, on my keyboard. Change the in frame to 300, so we have an even, you know, place to go. Um, we're going to put this on, actually, right now we'll do 400, so we can loop it all the way back around. Um, nice. Uh, and then I'll, I'll go back down, whoa, 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 I'll go back down, and we'll make this part the, the clear part over on the left-hand side. We'll put it on 2. Um, hit I on my keyboard, and then um, we will go to frame 300, and then we'll make this like go way over there, like 3.6 or something. Hover my cursor, hit I, and then go to this first frame on zero, and then hit Shift D to duplicate this, and then move it over to uh, the 400th frame, and then boom, now it loops, which looks really cool. So now it kind of goes blurry, and then it kind of you know goes clear, and then blurry, and then clear, which I think looks really really cool. So it loops really nicely, and more importantly, um, I think this needs to be actually more, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 that's better. 1.8, uh, and then eye on that. Nice, 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 nice. All right, cool. So, and then uh, more importantly, it just has a little bit of motion to it. So I like that a lot. I want to add some motion to the camera itself now. Let's go ahead, and on uh, the first and last frame, we'll hit location, and then on the last frame, we'll hit eye location. So those are the same places, so we can't, you know, mess it up. And then we'll just go on a kind of a random area. I don't want to do this like on a, on a you know, particular, uh, a particular way, excuse me. So what we're going to do is instead of adding keyframes by hand, um, actually, we don't, we, don't need the, we don't need the last keyframe. We can actually undo that one. We only need the first one. So um, let's go ahead and split my window into two here by putting my cursor in the top left hand uh, corner of the screen until it turns into a plus and then just splitting it open like that and then going to um, and then going to the graph editor. Nice. Now, once that's done. You go to modifiers, hit add modifier, and then choose noise. Now you can see when we play this, the camera is moving a lot and it's moving way too much. So we can fix that very, very easily by going ahead, oh, by going ahead and changing the values by hitting this little X location, Y location, and the Z location. So let's go ahead and hit uh, T to get rid of that panel on the side so we, can, no, we don't have to look at that. Um, we can change the scale to like 100, uh, maybe not 100 actually. Actually, we'll, well, believe it. Put the strength to about 0.1, and then we'll leave the scale on about 100, and we'll see what it looks like. Now hit copy for this right here. This little button right here has a copy button, and then we'll go to the Y location. Hit paste, 
There we go. Anyway, I'll get rid of that one. Um, nice. And then we can change the um, offset so it's not the same exact value. We'll just change the offset to a random place so it doesn't like, you know, overlap and it won't look exactly the same. And then go to Z, hit the little X, hit the paste button. And then we can go ahead and change the offset to a negative value most likely this time. And we'll just put it somewhere where I think it looks good. Um, that's fine. Now it's moving very, very slightly, which looks really, really cool. So that looks really nice. I like that a lot. Um, I want to do the same thing, but for the other, um, but for the other stuff. So actually, I think did it actually, I think it might have accidentally added a keyframe on the focus. It did. So I added a little keyframe on the focus distance here, so you can see the scale and the, um, you know, all the the strength and whatever else. You can see this is being affected. Now you can leave this actually, but not this, not this much. Obviously, that's just way too much going on there. Um, you can leave that for a little bit of like inconsistency, which was, was, was kind of cool actually. I'm not gonna lie. Um, if it like gives a little nice little flicker effect, like if I turn it up more, you see what I'm talking about. But that's like way too much, obviously. But like it's just something slight, like that looks, that looks really cool. I like that. All right, accidents, happy accidents. You know what I mean? Wow, that's crazy. All right, uh, that looks really cool. Like nice little flicker effect. Um, and then next thing I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and animate the um these little items themselves. So that the little tiny little um bars we have here. I'm gonna hold down shift, select every single one of those bad boys. Um, and also these letter text, the text up here as well, all of these things, I want them to move individually. Hit I on the first frame, sorry, go to the first frame, hit I, location, and then we're going to go ahead and now you can see we can open all these up by clicking and dragging downwards, clicking this little arrow that says object transform, click that, and then just drag downwards and open all of them at the same time. Um, and now we can go ahead and kind of, we can either go ahead and paste all of the modifiers that we had before, which might work, that might work, we might just try that out, hit paste, change the offset a little bit. And I think actually I don't I don't want to put any Y location keyframes. So I don't want them to change the Y location. Um, I don't want them to go to the left and up and down. I don't want them to go behind the text because that might look a little bit weird. So we'll put them on the Z and the X. Um, there we go. So that's a little bit too much. I'm going to change the scale down to 20 on both of these. Um, and the strength to maybe about 0.05. Point zero five, not point zero two. Point zero two. That's fine. We'll do point zero two, and then we'll change the scale to maybe fifty instead of twenty. Give a little bit more room to work with. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna copy that value. Actually, we're gonna copy the value with no offset. Um, copy that, and then we'll go to one of the next um, one of the next uh, things we need to do, which is this bad boy over here. We'll do the other orange one. Change it to a random offset on both values, and then we're good to go. So those are both moving now. There we go. They look great. And now we'll do the same thing on the white lines here. White lines. Nice. Easy. All right. We're going to put that there. Perfect. That is now moving as well. That looks really good. All right. Nice. Um, and now the... Oops, I think this offset would look good this way, and then the X would probably look good the other way. All right. Nice, very, very cool. And if you can, if you notice, funnily enough, when we get to the end here, it it kind of loops. It kind of actually loops, which is crazy. So usually, usually these like values wouldn't loop, and it wouldn't look like these. It would like these lines are kind of jumping around. But this one looks like it's jumping. But other than that, these actually kind of work. This is kind of crazy. Um, if I change this offset, it might work. Okay, I need to fix it a little bit more. Hopefully, question mark. That's good. This one kind of jumps a little bit. We'll change that one. I want it to kind of loop, so I don't really want them to jump as much as possible. Oh, that's the wrong value. Okay. That's crazy how this really, they really all kind of loop together. Like you cannot even tell that they kind of move there, which is a little wild. Now, the camera definitely definitely does not loop so that's something that i might want to go through and see if i can find a way to fix that if not then we could always animate the camera by hand or we could just really play around with it until it gets to where i want it to be but for the sake of this tutorial we'll just leave that exactly the way that it is if you want to do it by hand if you want to animate the camera by hand you can always just move it up and then hit, like, hit, like, hit g to move it up slightly you know hit i location you know move it over here hit g i location you know you can do it by hand um, which we might actually do. Let's go ahead and actually do that real quick. Just so I can show you the technique. Just in case you guys are unaware of what I'm talking about. Alright, so now the camera's not moving at all. The camera is not a moving. So what we can do is go to the first frame. 
hit I, location, go to the last frame, hit I, location, so it starts and ends in the same place. Go to, like, some random uh, frame, hit G, and I'm going to hold down shift so we can move it slightly, just slightly up like that. I, location, move it over, uh, hit G, move it down like this maybe a little bit. Over here, hit G, move it up slightly, you know, hit I, location, over here, we'll hit G, go down to the bottom right a little bit, and then we'll do one more, like, slightly up like that. Nice, when we play it, you can see the camera moves on its own, and it looks good, and it loops, so that looks really, really cool. I like that a lot. Now, something that I will say is this one goes up a little bit too much. All right. You can always refine these, of course. It's super, super easy to do. That's sort of the cool thing about um, animating by hand is that you can kind of get the effect that you want without having to worry about, you know, things being too random or whatever else, like the other uh, other technique that we're doing. Um, I think the, yeah, the depth of field is way off on this bad boy. So let's see if I can maybe change the offset a bit and get a, a, a little better of a value. Um, wait, is that my actual keyframes that might be different values? Yeah, they are. Okay. So the last, so the first frame needs to be the same as the last. So this depth of field's on two. So we hit shift D, duplicate that over and that's on two now. So when you do it, all right, nice. That, that does loop now. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, okay. So I'm trying to think if I actually like these pieces of text up at the top and bottom. I don't think that I do actually. I think they look kind of strange. I'm going to get rid of them. To be honest, I know it's good the way that it is. I like that. That looks really, really cool. So, that's good. The bars move. You can definitely tell that they're moving slightly, you know. The text doesn't exactly move on its own. And um, the camera is definitely a uh, moving. That looks really, really cool. Um, now, I might want to go ahead and do something like this. Maybe. And then we'll just get rid of the shadow on this. So, one of the things that I had to do with, with these lines, I didn't mention this, but one of the things I had to do was I had to go through the, to the material tab and make sure shadow was set to none instead of opaque, because you can see that if I have that on, then there's a shadow. If I turn it off, then there's nothing there. So, something else I need to do with this text, same thing, scroll all the way down, shadow mode, none, and now the floor is completely solid, which looks really cool. I'm going to change the color of this, make it a darker, uh, actually, might just actually turn specular all the way down. Maybe turn metallic up. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then um, maybe the roughness can go like down a little bit like that, maybe. That's kind of nice. Turn metallic down, actually. Yeah, I think actually, it, I, you know what? I kind of like just like just like this. But the problem is, is that I really wanted it to kind of blend in with the background. We can always just make our own background, though. That's the thing. All right, let's just make our own. That's fine. I'll just add a new plane. Just scale it up, move it backwards. Like so. Nice. And then when we change this color, we can change both the colors at the same time. All right, nice. Um, no, it's uh, material five. There we go. And now when we change both the this is just change the whole background as well. Nice. Cool. So it's a little darker in here. Oh, it looks nice. Add a little bit of blue to that. Slight blue. Nothing too crazy. Uh, maybe actually a slight bit yellow. Yeah, yeah, a slight bit yellow orangey. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, that is that. I think I might want to change this. Actually, wait. Let's change it to a blue color instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks nice. Very cool stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is how I made this cool little, like, intro type thing. It looks really sweet here. I like this. Ooh, I just smacked my microphone. I think this looks really cool. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this render real quick. And it looks something like this. I like that a lot. Um, like I said, go ahead and give this a little try. There's a lot of things um, that I enjoy about just, like I said, the really small things. The depth of field was a really, really cool technique in this video, I feel like. So get out there and do some depth of field stuff. And just like bloom. Make sure you turn bloom on as well. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mention that. But if you go to the main tab here, make sure bloom is checked on so you can see that. And if you have anything that's like specular, make sure uh, screen space reflections is turned on because those look really good. So if I if I were to go real quick to this and then turn on specular and turn down the roughness and turn up the metallic a little bit, you can see that we have a little bit. Oh, we have a little bit of that glow on there. You see in the back, a little bit of that glow on there. That's because of the screen space reflection. So you can see it here underneath all of these little pieces. There you go. Make sure that's on as well. It looks really cool. I might leave that on just like that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.